What's up guys, Max from MaxWorks here, and today I'm gonna to show you um, how I installed ballast into my 04 Taiga 22V, uh, Riders Edition wakeboarding boat. Um, we ended up putting, I believe they're 1,400 pound sacks in each rear locker and a 450 up front. It's a full custom reversible system. I got all the parts uh, as a kit from Mike's Liquid Audio. Um, I'll link in the description below Michael Sims is super knowledgeable um, and just a great resource to work on um, if you want to upgrade the ballast on your boat. And he knows how to do it. He puts together these, uh, these very comprehensive kits at a price point that you really couldn't even beat yourself if you were trying to source all these things yourself. Um, I'm very happy with it. I've actually already been on the lake with it. Um, we, I have a lot more learning and tuning left to do, but the system works exactly as advertised and I can't explain how happy I am. Uh, with it. So that being said, this video is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It is just a collection of snippets showing the various parts of the install, um, how I tackled certain problems, how I wanted to make it look as factory and as clean as possible. Um, so I'm going to take you guys along with me and show you how I put this uh, into the boat. Um, if you have any questions on how ballast goes in or, or kind of any of the materials used, feel free to hit me up in the description or in the comments down below. Um, I always pay attention to all the comments, make sure I answer, answer any questions. Um, again, I'm super happy with the kit. I'm super happy with the customer service. I 100% recommend. This is not in any way sponsored or plugged. Um, I'm just a happy customer. Uh, so with that said, let me show you guys how we put this together. So while the Mike's Liquid Audio kit is pretty complete, I wanted to do a few extra things to make this set up foolproof and future-proof. And one of those things is we're adding an electrical system up to the front of the bow. So the bow, uh, or the, the kind of the captain's control area, has a pretty good size um, <clears throat> electric feed coming to it for all of your gauges and your accessories and whatnot. Um, but honestly, that's kind of staffed for the factory stuff. And I wanted to add a new distribution point for battery and ground um, to the helm so that we can add other accessories later as well as have kind of uninterrupted, uh, uncompromised draw for, um, for the bags. So I spent an extra 50 bucks or so and we have this. This is 6 gauge uh, welding wire. We have 20 feet good copper stuff of uh, both red and black. We have this, this is a distribution block, so this will be power, this will be ground, um, and this will allow us to put all of our accessories on it um, as needed. This is a 120 waterproof uh, breaker. Um, we're going to put this in line, this way it's an easy disconnect for the battery, as well as providing overcurrent protection. Uh, 6 gauge is nominally rated to about 150 amps. This is going to neck down to 120 amps, and then each of the pumps is fed by a 30 amp fuse. So that way, um, if there's any sort of overdraw, um, we have a series of breakers and fuses that will keep the boat from burning to the ground. Um, it also comes with these little adapters. I think this came with the wires. Maybe this came with this thing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mount this straight from the battery up to the helm along the um, helm side of the boat. And uh, we've got to figure out a good place to mount this. Okay, so we've got our power run. Let me walk you through it. Back there is the battery, there's your fuse breaker, or get breaker. It runs up inside of that channel, down along here, and exits here. We've got this trim panel removed. It's right over here, you can see it. And we're gonna do, so we're gonna take advantage of all of this dead space in this fiberglass. So one thing, this is our distribution block right here. So obviously we can't mount it here because of the uh, the panel that goes on here. We could mount this backwards like this, but then it would be kind of a pain to get things on and off of here. It would require some like removal, attachment, reattachment. So what I would like to do is I'm going to build an L bracket and mount this right here so it's facing forward. Uh, the trim piece actually comes out to about right here, so it covers a lot of the space up. Um, and will allow us to uh, kind of a clean install but still have it where you can get a screwdriver or a socket on this if you need to um, without having to disassemble all of this. So here's our completed system. We've got the battery 
run into this, which is our 125 amp breaker. Uh, I've got the breaker running all the way forward. Um, it's tucked up in there so you can't see it. But we have this custom fabricated aluminum bracket and it's holding our rails and we've got our black and our red already confirmed. We've got 12 volts up here. So this is what we're going to use as a power distribution point for um, the ballast system as well as potentially lights or anything else I choose to add in the future. It's just good to have um, you know, heavy gauge wire running up here, battery. So that's it for this section. Unfortunately, I can't film a ton outside because there's guys installing fiber uh, for the city. But this is our pump mount. So you're gonna have one pump that's gonna face on the backside forward here. So this is towards the motor, this is towards the front. So if this is sitting like this in the boat, I'm the motor. This pump will hang down and face like this to loop around to the front bag. And then these two pumps uh, will each feed one of the rear lockers. So unfortunately, my, uh, my MIG welder has died. So we're gonna have to TIG weld this. It's gonna take a little longer than expected, but uh, should come out like a nice looking piece. I'm gonna give you guys a little update. Um, my buddy came by this morning and we installed the through hole, the through hole uh, mount. And if I hop down here under the boat, you can see them. They got a nice fat cog bead of silicon that pushed through. That's uh, where we're going to do water uptake in the boat here. I can show you this is where they come through the hull. Um, you can basically see there's a fitting, a ball valve. And there's a jam nut that holds it tight, special gluey silicon stuff that holds in place. And then we've got one bag fed from here and two of the bags fed from here. This will be the front and one of the lockers. This will be the other locker. And then here is our installed um, pump mount. So we'll have one pound forward facing here, one here, one here. This is mounted in there. So that'll all bolt in. And then it'll just be a matter of doing the final plumbing and wiring. So definitely making progress so our next step was installing the pumps themselves they are installed using uh, I think uh, with a number 8 or number 10 stainless steel bolts washers they've got these uh, vibration isolators that came with them and then uh, I've got another n washer and uh, uh, nylock on each of them to prevent them from vibrating free and uh, obviously this one's going to feed the bag in that corner that one's going to feed the bag in that corner and the pump on the front is going to feed the front um, that way they should be fine the reason they're mounted pump side down is that way water cannot wick into the motor over time so again down here we have our entry ports uh, and so we are going to uh, you know kind of get the hose and start figuring out the hose routing so the next kind of step is to get the hoses routed from the inlets to the pumps. And then once they're to the pumps, we can figure out how to um, get them to the bags. It doesn't really matter which fitting goes where, but we're probably going to do the front and one of the rear ballasts on one of these because the front is much smaller and, and probably shouldn't uh, require as much uh, flow to fill up. So. I think we're going to hook this guy over here um, and then this guy over here and this guy over here just to make nice smooth bends. But I'm going to go get the, uh, the hose. There's the first hose in. They're pretty flexible and we're probably going to build some sort of mount right here to kind of keep everything out of the way. Because remember there's a seat that comes in here. But what I like to do is put a little bit of the sealant stuff on the end of the hose slide on you do have to use a heat gun and remember there's like a whole inch there so you got a heat gun it you know for a good 20 30 seconds and then it should slip on with zero effort so there it is hooked up to that pump um, now I'm gonna do the other two of these and then we can move on to actually plumbing in the bag so there's the feed sides all done um, basically we're just going to use some nice big zip ties, space this out, and we're going to tie this all in down here so it stays up underneath this uh, bench. Because there's an access panel here for uh, fucking with the V-Drive. Um, 
So all of that's gonna gonna work out pretty good, I think. Um, so now the next step is we got to lay out the bags, uh, lay out the rear locker bags, figure out where the hole's gonna go, and then uh, run the hoses to those. Yeah, these are the custom rear bags. It's very important. Each bag has five total ports, two fill drains in the back, and then three vents at the top. You need three of them plugged, and we're going to use one fill drain and one vent. Um, as you can see there, on this specific bag, uh, and these are custom made for this boat, these are not centered. Now, what's really clever is normally you can just pass it through this back wall and into the engine compartment. The problem I have is I have a battery that's mounted right back there and so I hopefully will be able to slip it in right there with a straight connection and then it'll latch on right there to the bag so that's kind of what we're gonna shoot for um, if not the other option is to cut a hole down in this bottom corner pass it through and there's one of these quick connects that has a 90 built into it so now we've got both of the rear bags the fills are done, strapped down, runs up here to the pump. See. There you go, you can see how that is. This side, a little short guy runs right over there. Fill that up. I put a little bit of gold heat reflective tape here. This doesn't get very hot, but just in case, a little extra barrier. Got these all zip tied up together, up out of the way, so stays out of the way of the seat. And now comes the hard one. We gotta figure out how to bring this hose from back here all the way up to the very front of the boat. So that's my next thing to figure out. So for the front locker, it runs down on top of the gas tank through here. Comes out, there was already a hole here for some sort of drain that wasn't being used. Comes out, runs up to the front, and is picked up in that front locker, and that'll be our fill and drain. So I think I'm about ready to call it a day. It's pretty hot here in Texas. But uh, tomorrow, we gotta get all this finished up. So all that really remains at this point is three vents and kind of the, the tubing that goes with the vents and the electrical, um, which is just a matter of installing the uh, switch panel and figuring out which direction each of the switches needs to be. And then obviously giving the boat a deep clean and throwing the bags in. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys in kind of a finalized walkthrough of everything. Unfortunately, I finished installing the rain, so I didn't get a lot of filming done, but we'll start back here. So there's our bag. There's our drain. Um, this is our vent drain that runs up here underneath. Exit that's the side. The fill is back there in the back. Here you can see it runs through our engine compartment up here. Here's our three pumps mounted. Front, right, left. Um, looking backwards, the other way facing forward. All the wires are tucked up nice and tight. These pumps work great. Come back over here to the other locker, you can see, same deal. There's our vent, our fills in the back. There's our breaker that controls uh, 12 volts up to the front of the boat. Where up here, we have our switch panel. Pretty self-explanatory as well. Nice and tight, mounted in there, so it's not in the way of me. Nobody else can bump it um, because these things fill and drain pretty quick, and you definitely don't want it running without uh, well, wanting it running. Here you can see the front fat sack is installed. Um, nothing special here except I mounted a pad in the front to keep it from uh, rubbing against the the bolts that hold the um, front tow hook in place. If you here look here on the side, there's our overflow. It runs up back inside of there. And if you look on this side, you can see our fill right there. Runs all the way up without any sort of problems up here to the front of the boat. All in all, it's a very tidy, a very good install. The only downside is we obviously lose quite a bit of storage space. I'm still figuring out the best way of, of accounting for that. Well, that's it for our ballast install video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, I cannot say enough good things about Mike Sims and Mike's Liquid Audio. Again, the link is in the description below. This is no way I paid or discounted or whatever. I paid full pop retail for everything from him. 
and just having that kind of support and a uh, call hotline is fantastic. I'd highly recommend it if you uh, are looking at for a system like this. So to put this into perspective, I did this during like evenings and days, afternoons during the week. We had some inclement weather that slowed me down. Um, but I would say there's probably about 10 to 11 hours of actual work in this by myself. I had a buddy come and help me with the through haul fittings I don't really know there's another way of doing that um, without either some sort of specialized tooling or a friend. Um, in general, this is a project that would go a lot faster with an extra pair of hands. Um, you know, doing it for the first time, it was a little bit of a struggle. There was a bit of a learning curve. If I was to turn around and do this project again, I think that we could probably do it, definitely do it in a weekend with another person, but maybe even do it in one eight hour you know, thrash fest. Um, again, it also depends on how clean you want the install to be and how much fabrication is done. Obviously, I fabricated a pump mount, a few other things to make this install um, look better and perform better, in my opinion. Um, well, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I do my best to answer all questions, uh, all comments. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, you can check out my surf pipe video. I will link to that as well. Um, as far as boat related stuff, it's the middle of July. It's been super hot. I'm very excited. We've had the boat out a couple of times with the ballast system in it at this point. Um, and now I've learned that, uh, you know, the boat can do it. It's just a matter of me learning and getting better at surfing and maybe getting some better uh, boards and stuff. But, uh, I'm super stoked. I'm very, very happy with this kit. I'm very, very happy with the result. And um, I'm glad I got to share it with you guys. I love you. Peace.